Now that we have uploaded our images to RoboFlow, our next step is to annotate our images. So I'm going to go back over to the RoboFlow app. Once you have uploaded your images, like we saw in the last video, those images are going to be split, unless you told it not to, will be split into training, validation, and testing sets. So you're going to be able to see all of your images in each of those respective sets here. Now, you may have uploaded images that already contained annotations, and maybe every single one of your images is already annotated. If so, that's great, and you're going to be able to move on to the next video. However, if some or all of your images are unannotated, you should be able to see that here. If I look at the top, I see training set, validation set, testing set, unannotated. So if I click on unannotated here, we see that there are three images in my data set that are not annotated. And RoboFlow calls out, this image needs to be annotated. So let's click it. Once we click this image, we've got this little toolbar on the right hand side, and we've got our image here that we need to do something in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on this create tool. It says here in this dialog box that the create tool is selected. At this point, we're going to click and draw a bounding box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this bounding box like this. At this point, we want to choose the label for this box. I'm just going to go ahead and with my keyboard, I'm going to delete that J and I'm going to write capital L because this clearly is a capital L. I can then hit the enter button or click save. I'm then able to go over to our next image if I want. So I've got image two here. Notice that the create tool is already selected. I'm going to put a bounding box around here, call that capital O and hit enter. And I'll move on to the third item here, the third image. I'm going to do capital C, hit enter, and that will be saved. We'll see that this has been labeled as C. One thing that I do want to call out here, in this image, I annotated that pretty well. If I go back to the previous image, this has also been annotated pretty well. But if I go over here to the first image, and I'm using my arrow keys to navigate left and right in between these images, this annotation did not do very well. Or rather, I did not do this annotation very well. Specifically, there's a lot of additional pixels between the bottom of the hand here and the bottom of the box. There's also a lot of pixels here between the left hand side of the hand and the side of that box. Generally speaking, you want to make sure that your box is drawn as close around the object of interest as possible. I'm going to click this drag tool here, or you can hit the D key on your computer if you would like. I'll click on this annotation. And I'm going to make that annotation much more snug around the object of interest. This helps our model when we train the model. This helps our model better detect what is an edge of that object of interest. I'm going to confirm that this is an L by hitting enter. And now these three images have been annotated. You don't need to click a save button. They're automatically saved. So I can go back to our data set. And notice how there are zero images left in the unannotated tab here. If you want to brush up on how to best label or annotate your data set, you can go ahead and click here, check out our RoboFlow annotate guide. You'll want to apply best practices to annotating. Probably one of the most important things when annotating is to remain consistent. For example, in the context of this American Sign Language Letters data set, if you're going to annotate, make sure that you either always include the wrist or that you never include the wrist. But it's up to you on what you choose to do there. Consistency is going to be important as it will help your computer vision model 
better perform and it will better understand what an edge of the object it's trying to detect looks like. This is how you annotate in RoboFlow. With that, let's pause here. And in our next video, we're going to get into how to pre-process and augment your images in RoboFlow.